Have you ever looked at a river and wondered where all that water came from? How did it get here, or even what kind of places has it seen? This is where headwater streams come in. But what are headwater streams? Headwaters are generally defined as where the source of river begins, or the furthest point from the end of the river. Headwaters can form in many different geographical areas, such as mountains, springs, marshes. They can even stem from glaciers. For our particular region, we'll stick with mountain headwaters. First, let's take a look at the water cycle. Water for a river begins in a few places from all over through the process of evaporation, transpiration, and sublimation. These form clouds in the sky which eventually get too dense and have to drop all of its water in the form of precipitation. Clouds will commonly drop their rainwater when meeting a mountain face, as the increase in elevation makes the clouds more dense as they rise in height and drop in temperature. As rainwater hits the ground on the top of these mountains, much of it bounces off of rocks, trees, leaves, and remains on the surface, while a small amount makes it underground, and even some make it so far down they become part of underground aquifers. Alright, so the water is now on the ground, but where is it going to go? Rivers, streams, and creeks are like roots for trees or veins for humans. They carry energy from multiple places to one. Just like energy, water is always trying to find the path of least resistance. Assisted by gravity, slopes, and many other small factors along the way, freshly fallen water will begin to accumulate in small crevices along the mountainsides, forming our first headwater streams. They won't form just in one spot though, but all over the mountainside, starting off just as little trickles of water. Eventually, these will gain ground, accumulating more water as they dive deeper towards the valley, trickling into other trickles and forming a stream. Remember the water that made it underground? That provides a constant clove for the stream through seepage. Those streams crash into other streams until the once gentle stream flows into a roaring river. Altogether, all of these headwater streams, creeks, and rivers form what is called a watershed. This is where all of the streams and rivers drain to a common outlet. The outlet doesn't have to be the ocean, but can also be a lake or a small pond. It all depends on the scale in which you examine water flow at. Watersheds can be as small as a footprint or span the entire eastern coast. To put this into perspective, imagine a pool with a tarp on top of it. As it rains, water droplets hit the tarp. With gravity, the droplets slide down from the higher points of the tarp down to the bottom, eventually forming a pool of water. The tarp all the rain droplets that hit the tarp and the pool of water in the tarp is the watershed. On a larger local scale, the Asheville area practically sits between two predominant watersheds. In particular, if water falls on the western side of Mount Mitchell, it will eventually flow into the Tennessee watershed and eventually the Mississippi River where it will dump out into the Gulf of Mexico. For the eastern side, it will flow east into the South Atlantic coast eventually flowing into the Atlantic Ocean. That's quite the adventure for a little water droplet. In the world of conservation, protecting headwaters and watersheds is an important aspect of our work. Even though headwaters are small, they are one of the most important aspects of a watershed. In fact, headwaters make up of half of all the total river miles in the United States. Since headwaters are so small and so abundant, it is easy for them to get blocked, destroyed, or polluted due to human activity. Since the water for our rivers begin here, if they are polluted or tampered with, this affects the overall health of the river for everyone. SAHC takes steps to help protect headwater streams through many different ways. One, by protecting properties under protection, we can guarantee that the streams won't be polluted or developed on. Two, through farmland conservation, we can educate farmers on how to take care of their cows and keep them out of the streams. And three, actively cleaning up streams and removing debris helps to improve water quality from the headwater all the way down to the estuary. Even though we are located in the mountains and have access to such clean water, it's our responsibility to keep it clean and be fair to those who live downstream from us. Still curious about headwaters and watersheds? 
Check out the links below to explore your own watershed to find out where your water goes, or to learn more about how water moves through the land. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.